Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and today we're going to be looking at DC Comics Cover Girls. Okay, so this is DC Comics Cover Girls. This is a hardcover collection. I think it came out in 2010. This is uh, written by Louise Simonson with a foreword by Adam Hughes, who did this amazing cover. This is from um, one of my favorite covers of Wonder Woman that he did. He's my absolute favorite cover artist for Wonder Woman. I mean, there's the dust jacket. There's a bunch of covers featuring cover girls. Obviously, the premise is uh, to feature great covers uh, that, you know, feature the heroines of the DC universe. Not to be confused with the heroine of the DC universe. Okay, so great cover of Lois carrying Superman. We're already in for a ride. I have to say whoever designs these books does a good job. I just love the like blown up uh, art and the end pieces. Oh, there's a great shot of Supergirl. I love that outfit. I feel like that might be the one that also had the headband, except the headband is not missing. This is Ed Hannigan and Dick Giordano. I normally bitch about Dick Giordano's inks, but I think for Ed Hannigan, it's a good fit. Um, uh, my beloved John Byrne, he provided the cover for uh, Superman and Lois's wedding album. But I have to say, this was a period when he started changing his faces and stuff and not super into like the lines under the eyes. Like, what is that? He almost looked like he has buck teeth. This is not like a John Byrne art criticism, but I'm just saying this is I, very nitpicky of me. But, oh, I like that that's a, a reversal of that cover. I don't know if that was uh, on purpose or not, but I'm sure it was, knowing John Byrne and his homages. There's a great shot of Wonder Woman by Gil Kane. I love Gil Kane, one of the best comic book artists. Um, I don't think I've seen so many shots of him doing Wonder Woman, so that's really cool to see that. I love this, like, 70s double W yoga, logo, <laughs> yoga. Oh, that's cool. That's Batgirl fighting, is that Joker's daughter, Harley, Harlequin? But she's dressed like the Joker, the great Frank Quitely from the Vampire Vertigo Vampire series Bite Club. I just love Frank Quitely's art. I could look at it all day. He does so much great stuff. Rags Morales, when he was on the um, Justice League, he has been around forever, and he started getting popular when he did Secret Identity Crisis with Brad Meltzler. Um, very famous series, more infamous for uh, ruining the legacy of Sue Dimney, but, and Dr. Light. And the whole just freaking Justice League for that matter, but that's a different video, right, people? Great cover of Catwoman from uh, Adam Hughes. Uh, cover run in Catwoman. Adam wrote the foreword. And I see Sex Cells is standing out. That's funny that Adam Hughes would say that because he's known for his good girl cheesecake art. Darwin Quinn. Darwin Quinn. Darwin Cook uh, pinup of Wonder Woman from New Frontier. Such, I like his Zoftig, sort of like robust Amazon-looking Wonder Woman. I thought it was a very fun version. I'm a huge Wonder Woman fan, and I'm very open to all different types of interpretations of Wonder Woman because she means so much to so many different people for so many different reasons. So if you can find your Wonder Woman, then that's fantastic. Infantino, Carmen Infantino, I'm seeing the... A lot of artists I recognize by their art, but Brian Bolland is one of them. But not Carmine Infantino. Michael Turner, Turner uh, and Ian Churchill. What an interesting dichotomy that is. And of course, it's uh, not to dog Michael Turner, but it's a Michael Turner cover, so you're not going to have any backgrounds. It's a great... Although he could draw like very detailed backgrounds, I feel like that's... Uh, sort of what got him noticed on Witchblade to begin with. Um, he did many, many, like, hyper-detailed backgrounds. H.G. Peter, the original artist, co-creator of Wonder Woman, I, he's a fashion illustrator. I love his style. It just is timeless and classic, and it sort of fits within that period, but it's so distinctly his own. This was a great cover from Adam Hughes. I want to say this was his first cover, and what a cover. They made that a poster. I've tried to, like, homage this pose so many times, but let me tell you, if you really want to feel bad about yourself, try to copy Adam Hughes. It'll set you back, like, uh, 10 years as far as uh, 
artistic confidence. Some old covers, some romance covers. It's funny because uh, romance novels uh, need a second look because they're actually, there's lots of great art, lots of fun stories, super drama, so classic. This is from the era, the I Ching era of Wonder Woman where she lost her powers and gave up her costume. Once again, great art. I'm loving that art. Such a great cover here. Starfire and her evil sister, Blackfire. Another great George Perez de design. That was such a great uh, cover. I mean, there's no amount of detail lost here. Rick looking a little Kirby-ish in the design of the mechanics there. I think Perez was definitely a Kirby disciple when he first came out. Looks like Brian Hitch on the, the Authority. Brian Hitch has really nice art. I feel like he uh, kind of whooped in on the coattails of uh, Alan Davis. You know, a lot of, I talk about a lot of artists and a lot of artists uh, come in emulating other artists or cloning other artists and then either finding their own style or just sort of making it their own anyway. Dave Johnson, great cover artist for 100 Bullets. Harley and Ivy, the favorite Batman, the animated series duo, even more so than Batman and Robin, wouldn't you say? Maybe not, but everybody loves Harley and Ivy. Another great um, quietly cover that's looking a little uh, raunchy there. Promethea, J.H. Williams, such a fantastic, beautiful illustrator. Oh no, this has uh, got to be the Alex Ross cover to cover number one. But I'm sure there's some stuff by J.H. in here. I mean, there's so many prominent female characters. Such a great, iconic character. It's always, it fe I feel like all the covers of uh, the characters, like when they're quitting, are definitely like iconic covers. Like when Spider-Man quit and his uh, costume's just in the trash can. Wouldn't that have been funny if they like uh, had a bum? I'm sorry, a homeless person. Um, I'm sorry, an unhoused person find his costume and become the new Spider-Man. Although without the powers, I mean, how far would that go? Great George Perez cover. I like how they're sort of uh, laying out these covers. Oh my gosh, that is such a great cover there. Uh, Cheetah in this Justice series by Alex Ross is so good, so creepy. Love his version of Cheetah in there. Another great Adam Hughes Wonder Woman. I love the old uh, <laughs> covers. I mean, she's tied to this boy. And of course, you know, she's powerless when she's tied up, which I don't know, isn't pretty much out anybody. But I mean, she's super powerless. But uh, anyway, this phallic torpedo is coming at her. I'm sure I'm just reading into it. It must be just my dirty mind. They would have never done something like that. See, that's so romantic. That looks like a Harlequin romance cover right there. Steve and Diana. Is she taking a lie detector test? That is so cool for so many reasons because as many Wonder Woman fans know, uh, William Martin Moulton Marston, the creator of Wonder Woman, is largely credited for uh, inventing the polygraph as well which also makes it interesting because then she's got the lasso of truth. So um, really, um, that's the first lie detector there. I love this cover. I mean, it seems so, uh, you know, sparse for an Adam Hughes cover, but great design. It's giving me the Alphonse Mucha influence with the... Um, Cult, or I forgot what they call it, but like that framing or whatever. Classic, classic, classic. This has re been redone a million times too. The new Wonder Girl, the hip new back off Tigers Wonder Girl, bursting on the scene, busting through the her old costume. This is a really fun. This must be Nick Cardi. I love Nick Cardi on Titans. Such beautiful artwork. It's the Donna Troy miniseries or DC special. Some more from the Powerless Wonder Woman. It's like the last issue of Wonder Woman before the relaunch. That'd be a fun one to go over. Must have been cray cray. 
I love this classic Perez, like that poster right there. Movie poster. Doesn't that look like a movie poster? There's Wonder Woman riding a missile, another phallus. Special, who is Nubia? Don't tell me this is the introduction of Nubia. It very well could be. Wait, I'm noticing a trend here. She's tied up, tied onto something, and having phalluses thrown her way. Anyway, Brian Bowland, such a great Wonder Woman cover artist. He did such a long run on her covers and such great, beautiful work. I love Brian Bowland, obviously most probably well known for his uh, killing joke with Alan Moore, one of the best comics of all time. This made me lose my mind when it first came out. I mean, George Perez's run on Wonder Woman is classic, timeless, exceptional. This Barbara Minerva version of Cheetah, I don't know if we should be thanking him or damning him for Wonder Woman 1984, but there she is. <laughs> anyway, so another great Adam Hughes cover. Notice the reflection of the little bugger she's fighting in there. John Byrne uh, doing his like photocopy, computer generated sort of effects. Which, eh, you know, I give him credit for being innovative at the time. And it actually doesn't look bad. So I'll allow it. And maybe if I didn't like burn so much, I'd have more problems with it. But we'll never know. Uh, I forgot. J.G. Jones. That's who did that cover. And it, what a beautiful cover. He was a great Wonder Woman artist, too. He did that. Haikatia, the Wonder Woman graphic novel where she's fighting Batman and she has her boot on Batman's head, like best cover ever. They should do a Batman versus Wonder Woman movie just so they can make a movie poster out of that cover. There's the cover from the book that I was telling you about. This is so amazing. Adam uh, does pencil and ink and then he scans it and he does Photoshop to cover color and he created all these like old effects and he captured the look of H.G. Peter so well. I would love to see him draw a book like half in this style and half in his real style. Are you listening, Adam? I know you watch my channel. Are you somebody who knows Adam listening? Tell him. It's a good idea. Wonder Woman, Spirit of Truth, Alex Ross. I mean, Alex, uh, I think, used uh, Linda Carter as his inspiration for Wonder Woman. You can sort of see it in the eyes and just my favorite Wonder Woman. More great covers by Adam. Just the things he can do. I'm just like, in my next life, I want to be Adam Hughes or just be able to draw like him because that's a pretty cool cover by Michael Turner. A lot of it's really, really depending on the coloring by Peter Steigerwald. So, well, uh, I'm sure the pencils are just bewitching. Doug Monkey, not one of my favorite artists, but it's okay. I don't know. It seems a little weak for a cover. With all the faded detail in the back. I don't know. Oh, Wonder Woman getting arrested. How, how shameful. Terry Dotson. I feel like he's sort of uh, like what I was talking about, uh, the artists who sort of come in looking like one artist and then ending up... Like, I feel like he sort of came in, you know, uh, influenced by Adam Hughes and uh, definitely came into his own. He's very prolific. I mean, he's done so many books and he does interiors too. Um, he's just a machine when it comes to drawing. He reminds me of like someone like Byrne or Kirby with his output. He's just always on a monthly, it seems, and always just really putting it out there. It's a good cover by Adam Kubert. You don't see a lot of Adam Kubert Wonder Woman covers, so that was fun. Here's some different... What is this? The Amazing After of Lois Lane. Okay, so Lois Lane had a lot of fun adventures in her day. Such a great character. The, the human uh, hostage. <laughs> Uh-oh. Who's this hussy having a milkshake with a uh, Oh, it's Lana Lang. Oh, there's Lois Lane. 
Leopard Girl Lois, Bizarro Lois. I mean, is that it should always just be Bizarro Lois. They should just replace regular Lois with Bizarro Lois and see how long it is before Superman like snaps her neck. <laughs> Baby Lois. Poor Superman. There's like a classic, uh, uh, I think this is just John Byrne, um, homaging like a cat fight from the back in the day or something. I mean, I don't know. These are probably all super sexist, but at least they tried. You know, that time Lois, uh, had an egghead and went out with Bizarro or, or that time she had a safe head or whatever the hell that is. Very groovy skirt. It's so funny because uh, Lois Lane is so like, uh-oh, oh no. Fat shaming Lois Lane, that's no good. And this, oh my gosh, I mean, I could you imagine them doing this today? So Lois wanted to see what it would be like to be black for a day. And let me tell you, there's, I don't know what the intention of this was, but there's so many problems with this. <laughs> so many problems with the actual story. You should definitely read it for yourself. I don't want to spoil anything, but needless to say, she goes, once she's gone black, she does go back because uh, Superman ain't having it. And uh, that's like a moment in time there. I wonder what year that was. I would probably the socially conscious 70s, right? I don't know. Superman family. I, w I don't know if they'll have it in here, but I always loved, I remember, I think my brother had a Superman family and I was immediately drawn to the one where Supergirl punches off the head of her own statue. <laughs> I love these covers. I think they're so great. When the Man of Steel came out, um, John Byrne did these covers all with the same design, sort of like the lead character just breaking up the cover like that. I thought it was a lot of fun. Of course, Everyone knows I love Jod Byrne. I like Ed McGinnis too. A lot of people think he's cartoony, but I like cartoony art. Kevin Nolan, one of my favorite artists. So good. Drop Dead Superman. That's hysterical. The thing, here's the thing, and that might be an um, homage, but I don't know. But sometimes with the homages, like if you think it's not an homage, then you feel ripped off when you realize it's just an homage. Um, that was a cool all-star Superman, of course, like the best incarnation of Superman, perhaps Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely, such a great series. Supergirl with her hot pants and her V-neck and her billowy sleeves. I actually like that costume. I like this costume too. I'm a Supergirl fan. I like her. I think she has a place in the Marvel universe. I love this Bruce Tim design. I think it's fun. And of course that classic cover, you know, that looks like a pretty uh, horrifying crash and she's just kind of walking away from it unscathed, but good for her. She's super girl. She's got a super horse, a super cat, a super romance. These covers are just crazy. I wish, I wish comic books, you know, everything has to be like a freaking Frank is Frazetta painting now. Not that that's not great and everything, but Maybe, maybe comics could, could benefit from getting back to what made them so great and doing crazy covers like this and telling, I mean, you know, it's like, I look at the covers now and I see like, I don't know what I see, but I like, especially, I don't know, like the X-Men posing and they're unrecognizable. The art is terrible. You have no idea what's going on inside the book. I get a lot of hate mail for that. Send it to my P.O. box that, uh, that I don't have, guys. Otherwise, like and subscribe and leave wonderful comments and share and tell everybody. It's a fun riff. I'm, uh, it's from when Peter, Peter David was on Supergirl. I, th I like Peter David as a writer. Um, this was so weird, though. He turned her into an angel or something crazy like that. John Romita. Get a rare Romita DC cover. Power Girl. Now we're now we're cooking with oil, and this is like one of the best. I love that. I mean, how does Adam even come up with stuff like that? That's just so amazing. And this 
right here is why you learn how to draw drapery. You learn why you learn how to draw, draw a bowl of fruit with shading on it. Drapery is so important. It's so important to know how to make folds and clothes lay and look realistically. You know, like a, like Spawn's cape. <laughs> Just kidding. I love Tots art. Don't think I'm hating. Darwin Cook cover. His uh, version of Catwoman was very cool. He made her cool and noir. Batgirl by Infantino. Gotham Girls. I mean, aside from Super Supergirl, I mean, the Trinity pretty much makes up the... Wow, that's some really cool... Tim Sale art. P. Craig, P. Craig Russell. One of the best artists in comic books. Such a fun Catwoman cover. I love that. It's the original Batwoman with her crazy yellow costume. and Their costumes look so uncomfortable. Could you imagine fighting crime in that? Or that, for that matter. But at least that makes more sense. Another great Balin cover. And I can tell this is after he switched to digital. You can just tell in the coloring. So I didn't mean to make this video so long, but I guess I'm enjoying this more than I thought I would. <laughs> Dark Victory. That's a slimy, skeezy looking cat woman there. Frank Miller, of course. Carrie Kelly. I love Carrie Kelly. Such a fun Robin. Oh, Brian Ballin. He is the one who, uh, this is a flashback from The Killing Joke, but a horrible cover. Like, let's recreate one of the worst moments in comic book history. One of the most defining moments. Gotham Girls. Some fun animated looking artwork. Well, that's cool. Da Vinci <laughs> and Ballant. I wonder how you get away with that. Huh. Anyway, some more fun Catwoman covers. I love when they work their uh, signature fun into the cover like that. Did I see? I thought I, thought I saw a reflection of Batman's uh, cowl, but I'm just hallucinating. Jim Lee on Batman. The best thing about Jim Lee's characters, you can always see uh, their breasts and their buttocks no matter what position they're they're in it's handy <laughs> so my mom used to draw i wonder why i don't draw that way she sort of taught me how in the beginning but you know she was no gym boy <laughs> jason pearson my buddy jason i love his covers he has a fun cartoonish but action style at the same time. Uh, the 52, remember how fun that was? Jesus, let it go already. Oh, they did, Dan Diodato is gone. So I don't know if we'll be forced to put up with any more D or 52 crap anymore, hopefully not. These are some crazy covers, House of Secrets. Little fun bit of trivia here, this is uh, uh, Bernie Wrightson, and that is Louise Jones, who would become Louise Simonson, who wrote this book. So that's got to be fun to be immortalized like that in one of the greatest comic book covers of all time. That's such a great cover, too. Swamp Thing, The Anatomy Lesson. Ooh, Black Orchid. Great character, costume design. Sandman Mystery, Death. Dave McKeon on Black Orchid. Great painterly collage. Oh, Bass, that's cool. Very cool. <clears throat> so I guess, oh, okay. We're gonna get into some of the Wildstorm stuff since uh, DC bought Wildstorm. J. Scott Campbell. I like his work well enough. I think he's done some fun images over the years. Well, there you go. Someone on the toilet on the cover. That's interesting. Glenn Fabry. Fabry, perhaps. Preacher cover artist. I like his art. 
I guess, I guess, uh, Travis Trust, I know I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but Travis Charre, <laughs> uh, such a great cover, and his work on Wildcats was so much fun, I really like this art a lot, too bad he doesn't do that much anymore, but nobody does that much anymore, do they? There's some kicking Art Adam stuff, uh, is this... J.G. Jones on Promethea, or I'm sorry, J. H. Williams III, inked by Mick Gray. This is a great, like, 70s homage poster. Promethea, Fables, James Jean. It's a great cover artist for that. More Frank Quitely. Greg Land, The Great Tracer. Birds of Prey, New Generation. Huh. Howard Shaken, Hot Girl there. John Cassidy drawing Star Girl. Zaytana, that's a cool uh, Ryan Sook cover. I love Ryan Sook's art. Zaytana. I mean, what was with the thigh high boots anyway? I mean, she wears high heels. Get over it. Get with the program. It just looks better. And you have all those great fishnets. You got to show them off, right? Great Simonson cover of Big Barda. Very reminiscent of his work on Thor. This is my first issue of the Teen Titans. Tara joins the Titans. And what a great cover that was. I mean, I was completely... I, I couldn't not buy it. I mean, look at that. Some unexciting stuff. I do like Ed Bennis. Phil Noto's okay. Ethan Manskyver. Greg Land. Ed Bennis. Mark Texeria. Texiera. Love his work. Remember him? his stuff on Ghost Rider? So good. Ooh, there's uh, Jade from Infinity Inc. Looking very chesty, eh? They look, they both look like they walked off the set of uh, uh, Kyle and Jade do a porno or something. Anyway, well, there's that, that Michael Turner Wonder Woman image again. I guess that is kind of cool the way the lasso is glowing and all that. Streaky and Super Horse. So Str Super Horse is the name and the other one gets called Streaky. Why not Super Cat? Anyway, so that is Cover Girls by Louise Simonson. Please subscribe, hit like, and thanks for joining me for a look inside this book, and I will talk to you guys and bring you some more later. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.